guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are doing a Q&A all about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, aka STEM, specifically being a woman in STEM. Now, for a little bit of background, in case you're new to my channel, um, my name is Kaya, and I graduated last year in 2018 with a degree in chemical engineering, and now I work in tech. So I have, you know, two slash three out of the four letters in STEM, and so I feel like I've learned a lot through my experience, you know, getting an engineering degree and now working in tech, and so I wanted to answer some of your questions. So I did a little Instagram question sticker, and you guys sent in your questions, and there are, you know, a number of them that were repeated that I think I really wanna to touch on. So we're gonna start with um, college questions, because, you know, chronologically, we're gonna go in that order. So someone asked, what was college like being one of the few women in your classes? So I did chemical engineering, which in my opinion, the gender ratio is a lot better than say um, electrical engineering. I think the ratio is much, much better. Um, I would say in my degree, like in our class, um, we had maybe like a 40 to 60 ratio of women to men. So it's a lot better than, you know, electrical engineering, which I would say is like 80, 20 or 20, 80 where women are in like the severe minority. But um, it was a little bit weird because you are surrounded by boys. It was a little bit frustrating for me because I found that it was very difficult to connect with guys in my degree. So in my opinion, um, the gender ratio actually made my you know, friend groups a lot stronger is because we recognized that there are not a whole lot of women doing our degree and so we had to stick together. And so all of my friends in college were mostly women, which I think is really amazing because um, obviously chemical engineering is a very difficult degree. Any degree is very difficult, but especially chemical engineering for what it is, I found it to be very challenging. And so having that, you know, cohort of women going through the same experience as you taking those classes with you is really really special because i think female friendships are really something just special you know like i think nothing compares to the friendship between two women um and so i feel like it was challenging you know and it was intimidating i think is the word i want to use um, being one of the very few women in my classes, but I think I would I had a better experience because of it because I found these amazing talented intelligent, you know strong women that I could really connect with and go through the degree with I would say that misogyny is so very much prevalent in today's society It's not gone away by any means, but I will say that I went to a very liberal college And so people were a lot more progressive than say if I went to school in like a very, in a very Republican area um, so I really didn't face that much sexism, you know, during school. Obviously, there's like the offhand comment here and there of like, a girl suck at math. And I'm just like, oh, what are you talking about? I outperformed you every single time in differential equations. But I really found that the guys in my classes were, you know, they weren't total pig heads. I think if you are currently like a high school student and you're looking to major in engineering, don't be scared. Things are so much better than they used to be. Obviously, we still have our challenges, but it's going to be a lot rarer to hear someone say, you know, oh, we can't have a woman on the oil rig, you know, BS like that. You're not gonna find that as often um, as you used to, you know, back in the day. Hi friends, it's me. Um, so as I'm editing this video, I'm realizing that I have way more thoughts on the questions that I was asked. On this particular day, I was feeling very scatterbrained and so I missed a lot of really important points that I wanted to make. And so as a result, I am definitely going to be filming a part two to this video where I go over the same questions, maybe a couple new questions that come up in the comments down below if you guys wanna comment any questions that you have that aren't covered in this video. But um, yes, I'm definitely going to film a part two because there are just a lot of points that I want to make that I think I missed in this video. So stay tuned. Okay, someone asked me, have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? How do you personally overcome it? Oh my god, I hate this question because I am still trying to figure it out. I can tell you, um, I have this like ongoing joke with my friends that we, you know, tricked our university into giving us chemical engineering degrees because there are still days where I feel like I didn't learn anything, I didn't earn anything. Um, I just like kind of fooled everyone and I was 
kind of BS my way through everything, but that's absolutely not true. I have to look at my, you know, my GPA, I have to look at the fact that I actually graduated, the fact that I built these friendships and these relationships with professors and other, you know, grad students, that I really did something worthwhile. And so imposter syndrome sucks because it stems from a lack of confidence and confidence is so difficult to build when you are faced with a very challenging situation that really tests who you are and what you, you know, think you're capable of doing. I can tell you that imposter syndrome will do nothing but hold you back. It's not a way to motivate you at all. That little voice in your head that tells you you're not good enough, you haven't done anything, it's so, it's so harmful. It's not a way to motivate yourself at all. You need to tell that voice to shut up. So um, the way that I deal with imposter syndrome is I like to get pep talks from you know my family or my friends or even myself. I am an avid journaler. I love to journal. And so what I will do pretty often is write down like those negative thoughts that I'm having. Like for example, um, you know, you're not smart enough to have gotten a chemical engineering degree. You tricked the system somehow. And I will sit there and I will write down all the reasons why that is complete BS because I will count the number of hours that I took, you know, taking chemical engineering classes. I will count the hours that I did in my research lab. I will write down my GPA, even though GPA really doesn't matter. But you know, for me personally, like I would just use it as justification for saying, hey, that little voice in your head is full of BS. Um, you need to not listen to it. Another question that I got is how did you get into tech with a background in chemical engineering? And to be honest, I don't really know. I don't really know how it happened. Um, it just so happened that the company that I work for was recruiting at the job fair at my university and they were recruiting specifically engineers even though they were doing tech. So it was just one of those very serendipitous kind of um, occasions where they were looking to hire engineers for their tech department and I happened to have done an internship in IT the summer before I was looking for a job. So I did have a little bit of IT experience, not in, you know, coding or anything, but in project management. And so that's, I think that's how I landed my position at this company was because I really sold the fact that I did have experience in IT, that I did have experience in project management, that I understood the technical things that scientists are doing. Okay, I guess I should back up a little bit. So I actually work for not a tech company, but a pharmaceuticals company, and I work in their IT department. So when I say I work in tech, like I do code every day, you know, I work with the scientists every day, you know, I do machine learning. So when I say that I work in tech, I mean that I work in IT, but I'm not like the IT tech support guy. You know what I'm talking about? Like the guy that you get on the phone with and you're like, my computer isn't starting. I'm absolutely not that person. I do like business critical projects for the company. So my story is like a little bit weird and like serendipitous because it just so happened that the company that i wanted to work for happened to be recruiting engineers at our job fair and i did you know that internship in it and because it's a pharmaceuticals company i figured that you know they would want people that are passionate about the mission of the company which is saving lives and so i really sold the fact that you know i'm also very passionate about healthcare i worked in a biotech research lab i would say that if you're an engineer looking to transition to tech um i i feel like the fact that you are an engineer speaks volumes because I, I i hate to say it because it sounds so conceited but people always want to recruit engineers because we're freaking smart and we're really gritty and we're really talented and we're really resilient i think it will be difficult to get into tech because you don't have you know the skills of like a say a comp sci background like a computer science degree but you can still you know really play up the fact that you did this really difficult degree you have the problem solving skills you have you know the grittiness you have the resilience you have the ability to learn very quickly on your feet those skills are invaluable those skills cannot be taught i would say if you have the option to take coding classes during your undergrad that maybe don't count towards your degree um i would say if you have that goal of working in tech and you have or you're like working on an engineering degree i think it speaks volumes that you're like being proactive with your future by taking a couple of coding classes here and there like learn python learn r like regardless of whether or not you use those languages in your job it still shows that you're committed to learning so next question or the next couple of questions that i just wanted to touch on is relating all to 
you know, feelings of isolation, feelings of discrimination in the workplace because tech is a very male dominated field like it is. And especially the stereotype of tech bros I have personally seen in my job. And it's just, it's not my favorite. I am very lucky to where I work in an office where the ratio of men to women is pretty high in the sense that it's, it's pretty even. Um, there are like a number of really talented women that are in my office. I don't personally work with them. My team is actually all male now that I think about it. Like I only work with men. But the thing is that in any professional setting, if your company culture is truly devoted to diversity and inclusion, then you're not going to find an issue with employees, you know, discriminating against you. So the company that I work for is very, 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 very much focused on diversity and inclusion. It's a huge initiative at my company. And so I find that there's like an adequate amount of resources and training and mandatory training that you have to take so that discrimination doesn't happen. Now, are there sexist attitudes? Obviously there are, but I personally have not come across that much misogyny or sexism in the workplace because the company culture uh, where I work is just phenomenal. I feel like I'm such an anomaly because I had a good experience with chemical engineering. I somehow transitioned from chemical engineering into tech and now I work in tech and I'm having a great experience working in tech. Um, so I feel like it's kind of like a unicorn situation where it's just kind of rare that I haven't experienced like a crazy amount of sexism at school or in the workplace. But does it exist? Does it happen? Absolutely. I have a friend that is working or was working on an all male team at my company and she had a really hard time because, you know, all they wanted to do for their socials was go out drinking and she doesn't drink. Um, and they wanted to just like, you know, I don't know, just like do like very like male things. I'm not saying that women don't drink, but like she was very uncomfortable being the only woman on the team and having to go out with them, go drinking. It just felt very weird for her. So she actually left the team because the culture was a little bit, a little bit toxic, um, a little bit hostile. Um, there were some very sexist things said to her and it was really difficult to see that happen to her because um, obviously I am so committed to this company and I really love where I work and it would just really hurt me to see that these tech bros were kind of ruining her experience. So it definitely happens. I personally haven't experienced it firsthand, but I have seen it happen over and over again. I don't know if that really answered any questions. Um, I think the main question was like, do you experience discrimination? And the answer is no, not really. Um, I'm very, very lucky to be working at a company that really promotes diversity and inclusion. And so I feel very lucky in that sense. Um, but I really do feel for my other tech sisters that have to deal with like really sexist attitudes from tech bros. Okay, the, I think this video is getting really long. So the last question I wanted to talk about was what is an average day for you at work? Do you enjoy the job? So yes, I enjoy my job. I find it to be very challenging, um, which I really like because I'm just one of those people where if I'm not challenged, I get bored and then I get unmotivated. So it's really good that I'm always really challenged in my job. I'm always learning something new, which at first was a little bit difficult for me because you know, you spend four years of your life devoted to a degree and you're like, okay, I'm done learning. And then you walk into a job where you don't know anything and you're like, oh, okay, I don't know anything. So you have to be constantly learning, but I really like that process of constantly learning because I feel like I'm just like exercising my little brain muscles. So my typical day to day, it really depends. Some days I literally just sit in meetings all day and I can't get any work done and I have to work in the evening, which I really don't like doing because I believe in the separation of work and play or like work and relaxation. So I try not to work in the evening, but you know, sometimes that happens because you have deadlines coming up and you have to get your work done. Um, but where was I going with this? Gosh, I'm so scatterbrained today. But I think um, generally, you know, I'll have maybe like three to four hours of meetings a day where I meet with, you know, my teammates, with my manager, with my peers, with the scientists that I work with, 
Um, I'll have meetings with them to, you know, maybe assess the progress of a project. So my company is really into Agile right now, which is a iterative software development technique. If you want to know more about Agile methodology, you just Google it. There are tons of resources. But we do have like stand-ups, not every day, but every other week. So it's not really Agile. We have these like progress check-ins. Sometimes we're debugging things as a team, um, which means, uh, you know, like paired programming or like collaborative coding. Um, sometimes I have stretch assignments outside of my job i'm really getting into design thinking right now and especially human-centered design right now and so i'm taking some classes uh, through my company where i get to learn how to facilitate design thinking workshops so they're just like a number of different things that i do and then also i would say like i would say like the bulk of my day is spent coding so either you know in the r studio server um, I'll be coding some R scripts. Um, I'll be working with HPC, which is high performance computing, um, you know, working on Python scripts or bash scripts. I just got onboarded to a new project, which I have no idea what I'm doing, but that really excites me because I have so much opportunity to learn something brand new to me. And so I look forward to seeing my progress, you know, until the end of the year of how it goes. I think the biggest advice that I want to give anyone any girl especially that is looking to get into engineering or tech is that you just have to be your best advocate you know no one else is going to believe in you as much as you believe in yourself and so you need to put forward your best foot you need to really sell yourself like you need to know your strengths and know your weaknesses so that you can improve upon those weaknesses also just like be resilient and be gritty. Um, there's a book called Grit by Angela Duckworth. It wasn't my favorite book because I found it to be quite repetitive, but I did think that the message in it was very, very impactful. But basically she said that talent matters far, far less than grit, which is like, you know, persistence and dedication and determination and discipline. And I think that's absolutely true. Um, I am not like naturally talented at coding or anything. I do think I have an affinity for it because I am a very, you know, curious, inquisitive type of person. I really like problem solving. I'm very good at seeing patterns. I'm great at language learning, like foreign language learning. So I think that translates well to learning how to code. Compared to like some developers who have like computer science backgrounds, I am nowhere near them in terms of like talent. Could I get there potentially? Yeah, I could probably get there but as of right now i'm just not there and you know what that's okay because i'm really committed to learning i think always being a student in life is the most important thing that i can tell you because you will truly never ever ever stop learning i don't care how senior you are in your job you're always going to be learning something and if you're not learning anything and you're stagnant and you're kind of complacent where you are you need to leave so you always need to be learning i think that's so important for your self growth and also to challenge your brain and make sure that you're getting a lot of value out of your job because in addition to providing value to the company your product should also provide value to you i provide value to the company by helping out the scientists with their data problems and in return you know i get to learn stuff about you know the newest methods in microbiome research or single cell rna sequencing and that kind of thing okay my camera just died so that's my signal that i need to hop off those were like the base questions that i wanted to touch on that i got most frequently if you had a question like a burning question that i didn't address uh, please comment down below and let's have a little discussion about you know engineering and tech and being a woman in those fields i'd love to talk to you about it but yeah until my next video have a beautiful week and i will see you then bye